Uh, look, you're welcome for that, by the way. If anybody has been just not happy with Baylor football, that, by the way, going to be very clear, top of the show, they went three and nine. I didn't make them go three and nine, and I don't like that they went three and nine. I don't like that the coach that made them go three and nine, who appreciates questions or used to at least, used to, to hang out, used to. And I and, and I get that I've been cynical toward the program, and I'm not a big Aranda fan. All right, let's let I let's lay it on the table. However, wow, this whole recruiting that can walk me through the Baylor Bears, who are the number one Big Twelve, who are the two. The top two recruiters, individual human beings per 24-7 in the Big 12. Where? Why? Like the Dave Arena thing of we're paying players. So is everybody else. So is everybody sure. else. And a lot Bags, of them are more money. Yeah. Bags University. Where did this come from uh, basically overnight? Well, I will say it's kind of highlighted by the fact that you mentioned the top two recruiters in this conference uh, as coaches. And what's funny is one of them was on the staff the last few years, right? Yeah. For for how bad Baylor's been in recruiting. Yeah. Um, the, the reason is the other guy, Keenan Hall. He is yeah. the reason. Um, I mean, he comes from SMU, which... You know, I, I would understand if you wouldn't follow that nationally, but here in Big 12 country and within the state of Texas specifically, it's been weird. The last couple of years, you're like, huh, SMU? SMU got that guy? Or this kid's picking between Alabama and SMU. They literally just had a quarterback a few weeks ago flip from SMU to Alabama. Like, that's that's a real example right there. And so it's like, huh, that's weird. And they've gotten some good guys in through the door. And then all of a sudden, they or hires SMU's best recruiter, makes him the associate head coach or assistant head coach, whatever it is. And all of a sudden, these guys start flipping from SMU to Baylor. And these guys who had SMU in their top four are picking Baylor, like big time players. And that is the Keenan Hall effect, brother. That is it. And I don't know. I, I don't know how he's pulling this off. It makes you wonder what could this guy do after they go ten and two. If that happens, this is off a three and nine and, and it's, it's bad. They lose all these home games. They're, they're not competitive. They're never ready to play. We hear Dave's excuses after the game. I got to go on Twitter and see Drake toll talk about how bad they are and how no one goes to the games and how they can't recruit anybody. And look, and I think I said this somewhere, I think on the, on the podcast, I was with you on the recruiting thing for a while there. I was trying to frame the questions of like, is this good enough? Like this, yeah. this isn't great still. They had some nice names here and there, but it wasn't well, that was, great. That was Dave's crutch to keep his job was we have yes, a lot of, that was a big thing, young talent and a lot of, and a really good recruiting class. And then like five of the top guys left within the span of a month. And it was catastrophe including the quarterback kid that went to Oklahoma State mm -hmm. um, yeah. who bad by the way when we saw him in person well, the one game we saw is terrible through for yeah. negative yardage more passes complete to the opposing team in 4A Texas True. football 3A Texas football um, but I just don't why how this just all of a sudden Baylor is is and, in the middle and and maybe the better question for me is if they do go three and nine again, because the horse, those horses aren't in the stable yet. Correct. Do you just make Keenan Hall the head coach? Do you do what you should have done with Joey McGuire? What you could have done with Joey McGuire? Maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, Joey also did have a dynastic reign as a Texas high school football coach too. There's worth noting, and um, I mean, you, you'd have to keep him on the staff no matter what at this bless, point. Please, yeah. yeah, and. And uh, it's also worth noting to the point that we kind of talked about a few minutes ago was like even right after official visit season, which they're that next week after the official visits, there's like a wave of commitments. Baylor did not have that the July 4th holiday. We're like, they need another commitment or two to, to kind of shore up this class. And they've had three, four stars since then. And guys who are picking, you know, who are picking them over much better teams. But that is, that is something to keep in mind. I, I know there are a lot of wet blankets who come into the comment section. Oh, we don't have them until they actually come on campus. No. They're right. They are correct. And while Baylor's is, you know, shoveling out some money now, they don't have endless pockets and there are going to be other programs that are going to offer these kids bags, uh, yeah before the end of their senior season. And 
like that's that's inevitable and there is still a world where Baylor starts one and three or two and four and you're firing the head coach before homecoming um that that's that's still possible and if that's the case obviously it's all up in the air because Keenan Hall might it, let's just play that out. Dave Aranda gets fired during the season. Keenan Hall might not know what his job's going to be until Christmas. And you know, that's around national signing day. The recruits aren't going to wait on that. They're going to say, well, if you don't know, I'd love to follow you coach, but I've got these other offers from, you know, blue blood power five programs. So that is still the big equalizer here is Baylor needs to have some momentum on the field this year, which is not guaranteed just because they have gotten some good prospects. They need to win this year. They need to get to a bowl game in order to, keep that momentum going or else you're just a team that's had their fourth losing season in five years. Or you fire Aranda, hire Gary Patterson, keep Keenan Hall on staff, make him the offensive coordinator and go about your day. Head of recruiting would, or whatever. That that would not be a bad scenario. That wouldn't be I, a bad bounce back. My thing is if you keep the recruiter, you can suck again. You can suck again. Clearly and still keep yeah. a lot of these kids, right? Because the, the kids understand you sucked last year and they're yeah. still committing to the school. So yeah. The, the selling point had to have been from Keenan Hall, we will give you money, one, and you can come be the, the guy who makes us not suck. That builds us up, yeah. We very obviously were not good. You can't put makeup on three and nine and say, oh, we we're a couple plays away. You weren't. However, you can be with these guys. Baylor is the third, has the third highest Big 12 recruiting class uh, behind number one, my alma mater, the TCU Horn Frogs. Number mm. two, UCF, who will become a recruiting juggernaut. They are in Orlando, Florida. That's tough to compete with. Baylor has the most four stars of anybody in the league. My question is for TCU and Baylor both, then, you know, a couple teams that really weren't good last season. Correct. If you, if you were bad again this year, if the coaching changes in order, then how does that mix things up? And and I'll be damned if Baylor goes 4-8 and eight and Dave Aranda comes to the podium after that week 14 game or 15. We have so many weeks, two buys now. <clears throat> and, and goes, uh, we have a very good, strong class coming in. And then they give him, you know, so, oh, well, he's a good recruiter. Keep his job. The Chad Morris effect. Arkansas was like mm-hmm. top 25 every year under Chad Morris. He just couldn't win. He couldn't freaking win. I know. Dave and Aranda recruited play a bigger, Hall. bigger role than ever, by the way, now. If you want to keep giving bags to these kids and yeah. they're the ones who are like, well, we got to start seeing some wins on the field. I actually think the position of Baylor and TCU football programs aren't as far off as TCU fans would like to think. It's probably about a year behind uh, because let's just say they don't have Can a I, good year. This, yeah, go just ahead. Super, you, we've, we've had this conversation. Baylor's one win away in 2022 from 2021 from being TCU. From being TCU 2022. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what have fans of TCU and Baylor alike said about that season as it relates to their head coach? Well, it wasn't his players. 2022 Sonny Dykes. Wasn't his players. I don't think he's a bad head coach, but that's what I mean. Like they're a year or two off. If they miss a bowl game again, they're going to be thinking, well, is this Sonny's team? Like, what are we doing here? The same way we as Baylor fans did, especially after last year at three and nine of like, oof, once once Dave got his guys in the door, it, it started to go south. Yeah, they're just they're good on paper. The, the some of the recruit, the recruiting has been bad the last few years. Not, I mean, not col- yeah, yeah, not yeah. colossally bad, but bad, especially when you started losing a real you built a top 30 class, 25 class. And it right. fell and it apart was, at midnight. And it was a couple years in a row of mediocrity, too. It's not like there was one just inexplicably bad class. True. There was. Yeah. And, 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 that- and some not great planning within recruiting um you know, right. great, great recruiting plans throughout the years where, you know, one guy falls off the wagon at the last hour and you have nothing to back it up. Um, so things, things like that. Yeah. This has been a revelation, man, a resurgence, if you will. Not that rule was great. Mostly in the thirties, probably, but yeah, he go just back knew how to, to develop them. He who should not be named Art Bryles. They were recruiting. They were recruiting back then for sure. Joey had an eye for talent. Joey was good. So he was good. Now he's the head coach of Texas Tech. Uh, that's Cameron Stewart. I am Drake. Wait, Cole. He, I gotta get back. He is. He's the head coach of Texas Tech. They hired him. Yep. 
I got to get back to my team. Like the App State Mountaineers are in the college football playoff yeah. 12 seed as a group of five team. We lost to Liberty earlier in the year, though. It sucked. It, sucked. it happens. Trust me. Okay. Take yeah, it from me. Been there. Yeah, for sure. It happens. Stuff uh, in your head about. At Real Cam Stewart on Twitter or The Cam Show or Locked on Baylor. This has been and always will be Locked on. Thanks for making me your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.